Bad Moon Rising, the greatest. Right there, rising. He could stop on a dime, but also get separation whenever he wanted to. He could route up any DB for a shorter completion and didn't care what kind of hit was waiting for him across the middle. But at the same time, if you wanted to take the top off the defense, Andre Ryzen was your guy. He's one of the lesser talked about receivers of the 90s and maybe a little overshadowed due to being part of a top heavy 1989 NFL draft. But few receivers can compare to a prime Andre Ryzen, whose first five years in the NFL can stack up to anyone. You couldn't keep him out of the end zone no matter how hard you tried. And every time he got there, he was going to let you know. Unfortunately, as his career went on, he became more known for his mouth and off the field issues than his on the field play. But when Andre Ryzen was on, no one could contain him. After a great college career at Michigan State as one of the top receivers in program history, he came onto the scene as a star rookie for the Colts. But a trade to Atlanta would lead to one of the best five year stretches of any receiver in history. But after this, his career never reached the same heights. Yet he would have high points like becoming a Super Bowl champion. But overall, a career that started on such a high note ended in disappointment. And outside of the white lines, Andre Ryzen developed one of the worst reputations in the league, which has become what he's known better for. And while he was polarizing, he was also one of the best receivers of the 90s. Let's jog your memory. A Flint native, Andre Ryzen had uncertainty surrounding his living situation as a child, as he would move constantly. But one thing that was certain was that Ryzen was a talented athlete, which became fully known during his years at Flint Northwestern High School. Ryzen would star on the baseball diamond and the track, but his best sports were basketball and football. On the basketball court, he started at point guard and teamed with future NBA star Glenn Rice, while leading the Wildcats to a 55-1 record and back-to-back -back state titles. Then came the football field, where there were few positions that Ryzen didn't play. And Ryzen was so popular that other future NFL players would skip their own games to see his. When it came time for college, Ryzen would stay in state and attend Michigan State to play football for the Spartans. And while he was also a basketball star, he wasn't the tallest guy. So a future on the court seemed less likely. However, he would still appear in 24 games for the Spartans basketball team over the course of his college career. The Spartans were coming off a six and six season and featured an established offense with quarterback Dave Urema, star running back Lorenzo White, and number one receiver Mark Ingram. However, an early season injury to Urema would lead to freshman Bobby McAllister taking over at QB for half the season, and the freshman Ryzen would still get a respectable role as a split end, finishing top three on the team in receptions, receiving yards, and receiving touchdowns, with a highlight of his year coming in MSU's fourth game of the season on the road versus top-ranked Iowa when Ryzen would convert on a 50-yard second quarter catch and run in what would ultimately be a close loss, as this loss would be the second of three straight, with the Spartans starting the year two and four. They would recover to win their next five to finish the regular season at seven and four, but they came up short in the Hall of Fame Classic versus Georgia Tech, as Reisman's freshman year ended with him hauling in 18 balls for 260 yards and two touchdowns, while also returning six kicks for 92 yards. Urema was healthy in 86, and had his usual weapons on the roster. However, White struggled with knee and ankle issues all season and wasn't able to get close to replicating his production from last year. But halfback Bobby Morris would fill in well for a beat up White. But Michigan State still featured a lackluster rushing attack, which meant Urema had to air the ball out a lot more. And with defenses keying in on Ingram, it left a rapidly improving Ryzen in a lot of favorable matchups throughout the season as this year he would post career highs in receptions, receiving yards, and touchdowns, and would lead the team in all three categories, with his 966 receiving yards being good for not only second in the Big Ten, but also be the sixth most in the entire nation, as Ryzen would be named first team all-conference. After a season opening loss to an Arizona State team ranked in the top 25, they would beat number 20 ranked Notre Dame the following week, but after five games, they were just two and three. They would win three straight after this, but then would win just one of their final three to finish at six and five and miss out on a bowl game. As Ryzen's sophomore season had ended with him catching 54 passes for 966 yards and five touchdowns, while also adding 23 yards on punt returns. The Spartans offense looked a lot different in 1987 after the graduations of Urema and Ingram, but luckily Lorenzo White was back and healthy as he reclaimed his spot among the nation's top rushers. And with McAllister taking over at QB, the Spartans became a run-oriented team, 
as not only would they average nearly 240 rushing yards per game, they would also average less than 100 passing yards. So with this change in their offensive approach, it wasn't surprising that Ryzen's numbers really suffered. As while he would still lead the team in all three major receiving categories, he had significantly less receptions and receiving yards. But establishing a dominant run game did force opposing defenses to play up. And when they did, Ryzen hurt them, averaging nearly 22 yards per catch, as he would tie his touchdown total from last year and would still earn a second team all-conference selection. And while Michigan State saw a big decline in their scoring from last year, they made up for it with one of the nation's top defenses. And this would turn out to be a recipe for winning. The Spartans began the year with a big win over 19th ranked USC, but the following week, they would be dominated by Notre Dame, with a fourth quarter rise in touchdown being the only thing that prevented a shutout. Then the next week, they would lose to Florida State. So after a one and two start, it wasn't looking good. But the following week, they would beat Iowa on the road, then beat Michigan at home. And these two wins helped them enter the top 25. Ryzen would then have 5 catches, 96 yards, and a touchdown in another win over Northwestern before the Spartans tied the Illini. But they would run the table after this, winning their final 4 games of the season, which included wins over ranked opponents in Indiana and Ohio State, as they finished the regular season as the 8th ranked team in the nation, with an 8-2-1 record, leading to a Rose Bowl showdown with USC, where the game was all tied up at 17 in the 4th quarter when Ryzen made a clutch sideline catch on 3rd and 8 to keep the drive alive, which helped MSU eventually kick a field goal, and this would end up being the difference maker, as the Spartans would hold on to win 20-17, as Ryzen's junior year ended with him catching 32 passes for 694 yards and 5 touchdowns, while adding 85 yards on punt returns. Although the 88 Spartans had lost White to graduation, they still remained a run-first team, and Ryzen would even get a little involved in that as he totaled more than 60 yards on the ground. And although he was the team's leading receiver in all major categories, he was all the Spartans had in the passing game, as no other player on the team caught more than 8 passes. And while Ryzen saw his receptions drop for the third straight year, he was still a home run hitter, averaging nearly 24 yards per reception. Michigan State still had a dominant defense, but their offense wasn't putting any points on the board, as after 5 games they were 0-4-1, and averaging about 7 points a game. They found their offense after this, rattling off 6 straight wins and averaging over 34 points. And after improving to 6-4-1, they would get an invite to the Gator Bowl to take on Georgia. But Ryzen's final college game would end in defeat, as the Spartans lost by 7, with Ryzen's senior year seeing him catch 30 passes for 709 yards and 5 touchdowns, while adding 62 yards on the ground. So Ryzen was leaving Michigan State as one of the best players in program history, yet he also felt that he could have been so much more, but instead had to sit in the shadows of guys like Lorenzo White and Tony Mandarich. And even though Ryzen was leaving Michigan State as their career leader in receptions and receiving yards, he was bitter about his time there, and happy to go. And his next stop would be the 1989 NFL Draft, with Ryzen being one of the best receiver prospects on the board. Indianapolis Colts take... Andre Risen, wide receiver, Michigan State. <laughs> the 89 draft is best known for four out of the first five picks being future Hall of Famers. Ironically, with the one non-Hall of Famer being Risen's college teammate. But a little while after that, and after two receivers already came off the board, Risen was a late first round pick by the Colts. Indianapolis was coming off back-to-back -back nine win seasons with a solid defense and an offense headlined by halfback Eric Dickerson. The Colts' best receiver was the fourth-year Bill Brooks. And now, after adding Ryzen to the receiver room, the Colts' offense seemed to be coming together. Yet Ryzen had a slow start, as in the first seven games of his career, he surpassed 50 yards just once, and was kept out of the end zone. But he broke out in Week 8, with a 6-catch, 129-yard, and 1-touchdown performance in a loss to New England. And Ryzen would have at least 50 yards receiving in each of his next three games as well, and would have another 100-yard performance in a win over the Jets. Yet that was Indy's only win over that four-game stretch, as they were now sitting at 5-6. and six. Ryzen would have one more great performance in a Week 14 win over Cleveland, when he went for a season-high 135 yards through the air, with a touchdown. But the Colts were inconsistent as a whole, and were only able to manage an 8-8 eight eight record, as they would miss the playoffs with Ryzen's rookie year seeing him catch 52 balls for 820 yards and 4 touchdowns, while adding 18 yards on the ground. But Ryzen would get an unexpected scenery change over the offseason. 
The Colts look to have their number one guy for years to come. After Ryzen wrapped up a rookie season that saw him finish second to Barry Sanders in Rookie of the Year voting. And the only thing they were missing on offense was a quarterback after going through three QBs last year. So they would make that priority and send a big package to the Falcons for the first overall pick and a chance to draft Illinois' Jeff George. The only problem was that Ryzen was part of that package as he found himself in Atlanta going forward, which reportedly hurt Ryzen and his teammates. And while Atlanta knew they were getting a star on the football field, the player who was given the nickname Bad Moon Ryzen by ESPN's Chris Berman as a play on his name and then hit by CCR of the same name would find himself in some trouble with the law for speeding. And while this wouldn't be the last time he got in trouble, it was the beginning of some mistakes that would unfairly define him as a person and overshadow him as a player throughout his career. And the Bad Moon nickname definitely didn't help things, though it was catchy and Ryzen would eventually come to embrace it as the years went on. But now his career would continue in Atlanta. Showtime and primetime. The Falcons now had two of the biggest personalities in football on their team, with Ryzen and last year's fifth overall pick Deion Sanders. And these two were breaking a mold and entering into the world of endorsements and mainstream media as they were signing with big companies like Nike and appearing in commercials and music videos. And on the field, iron sharpens iron. And that became clear with Ryzen's jump into the league's elite during his first year in Atlanta. The Falcons were coming off a 3-13 season and had just brought in head coach Jerry Glanville, but they needed help everywhere. And a guaranteed talent like Ryzen was perfect as he would quickly slot in as QB Chris Miller's top target and would lead the team in all major receiving categories and rack up over 700 more yards than their next closest receiver. Ryzen would catch a touchdown in each of his first two games, then over his next four, he was unstoppable, recording no less than 128 receiving yards in each game and hauling in six total touchdowns. Yet the Falcons sat at just two and four. And while that kind of production isn't sustainable across an entire season, Ryzen would really see his numbers drop off over the second half of the year after teams keyed in on him as he would have just one more 100-yard game and two more touchdowns the rest of the way for a Falcons team who had a greatly improved offense yet would still only manage a 5-11 record and miss the playoffs. But even with his production drop, Ryzen's numbers still ranked among the league's best as he would finish top three in the NFL in all major receiving categories and earn his first Pro Bowl selection as well as be voted a first-team All-Pro with his first year in Atlanta ending with him catching 82 balls for 1,208 yards and 10 touchdowns. But the 1991 season would be a very exciting year in Atlanta. The Falcons had an even better offense this season as they were top five in scoring. Not a lot had changed for the team, but they would get a career year from Miller. And he had one of the league's most dangerous receiving duos to get the ball to, as the Falcons would get a breakout season from fourth year receiver Michael Haynes as he and Ryzen would combine for nearly 2,100 yards through the air. Ryzen's receiving yardage took a big hit, but he was still heavily involved in the passing game, hauling in at least five passes in 11 games, as he led the team in receptions and receiving touchdowns, again finishing top five in the league in both categories. So while Ryzen could still be a big play threat, he adopted more of a possession receiver role in 91, with some of his best games coming against division rival San Francisco. As in week seven, Ryzen went into Candlestick and caught two touchdowns in a big Falcons win. Then a few weeks later, the Niners had their rematch in Atlanta. And with the game on the line, Ryzen would make a clutch fourth down catch to keep the drive alive in the final minute of the fourth quarter. And then Haynes would catch the game winning Hail Mary touchdown in the final seconds as Atlanta swept San Fran for the first time in over a decade. Then a couple weeks later, Ryzen would haul in three touchdowns in a win over Tampa Bay which would be the first of five straight wins. And the third win of that streak would see Ryzen catch eight balls for 124 yards and two touchdowns, including the game-winning score versus Green Bay. Atlanta would lose a close one to Dallas in the season finale to break their streak, but they still finished with a 10-6 record, which was their first winning record and their first playoff appearance since 1980, as they would get a wildcard matchup with New Orleans. And although Ryzen was outshined by Haynes, he still contributed four catches for 56 yards and a touchdown, as Atlanta got their first playoff win since 1978 and were set to take on Washington in the divisional. But Washington would hold Atlanta to below 200 total yards and force six turnovers, 
with Chris Miller struggling in the rain as he threw four interceptions. Yet Ryzen was still able to catch seven balls for 62 yards in a loss and would end the year with another Pro Bowl selection and would be named a member of the second team All-Pro behind 81 receptions for 976 yards and 12 touchdowns. Ryzen would sit out the first week of the 92 season, but by week four, he was dominating, hauling in 10 passes for a career-high 177 yards and three touchdowns in a loss to Chicago. And that game would kick off a six-game stretch, which saw Ryzen average nearly 110 yards and a touchdown per game, as he would have at least 90 receiving yards in five of those games. However, Miller had gone down with a knee injury in week nine, and the second half of the season saw the Falcons quarterback by Wade Wilson and Billy Joe Tolliver, and Ryzen would fail to surpass 90 yards in each of the team's final seven games, but he would catch a touchdown in each of their final three. He would still combine with Haynes for over 1,900 yards through the air, and would again lead the team in all three major receiving categories, as well as finish top five in the NFL in all three categories, while even hauling in a career-high 93 receptions. And while Atlanta's offense took only a small step back, they featured the league's worst defense, and would in turn do a lot more losing this year as they finished with just a 6-10 record and didn't make a return to the playoffs. Yet Ryzen would get another second-team All-Pro selection, as well as a spot in his third consecutive Pro Bowl, and his regular season ended with him catching 93 balls for 1,119 yards and 11 touchdowns. 1993 didn't start well for Ryzen, as just days before the season, he was arrested for firing a gun when two men tried to break up a fight between him and his girlfriend, Lisa Left Eye Lopez of the rap group TLC, but he would soon be released on bond and be out on the field for the season opener versus Detroit. And he came out strong with six catches for 106 yards and a touchdown, which would kick off one of the most prolific seasons of Ryzen's career, as the Falcons had one of the league's best receiving trios, with Ryzen, Haynes, and Mike Pritchard combining for over 2,700 yards, as Ryzen had a career-high 1,242 receiving yards, once again finishing top five in the NFL in catches and yards and a lot of his catches were for touchdowns, as his career-high 15 receiving touchdowns would tie with Jerry Rice for the league lead. Yet a lot of those passes came from QB Bobby A. Bear, after Miller's season was again cut short after two games because of knee issues. And the Falcons finally had a respectable rusher in third-year back Eric Pegram. Ryzen had another three-touchdown performance in Week 3 versus San Francisco, but after five weeks, the Falcons were winless. Ryzen would put together a great four-game stretch after that, averaging nearly 100 yards per game and hauling in six touchdowns, as Atlanta went 3-1 in that period, and won their next two after that. But they would end the season by losing four of their final five. And while they had an above-average offense, they continued as the worst defense in the league, which held them back and led to them finishing with another 6-10 record and missing the playoffs. Yet Ryzen once again was named second-team All-Pro and voted to his fourth consecutive Pro Bowl, where he would even take home the game's MVP, and his regular season had seen him catch 86 balls for 1,242 yards and 15 touchdowns. But a lot happened over the offseason, heading into the 94 season. Off the field, Ryzen had essentially lost his home over the summer, as in mid-June, Lopez would cause a fire in his house out of anger, after finding Ryzen with another woman. And even though he lost his home in this fire, he still kept his love for Lopez, and the two remained together, even after this incident. Then within the Falcons organization, the team had moved on from Glanville and replaced him with June Jones. But the bigger loss was Deion Sanders, who had bolted to San Francisco during the offseason. The team had a new look offense though, as Haynes was gone, yet new signing Terrence Mathis had a breakout year, leading the Falcons in all major receiving categories and combining with Ryzen for over 2,400 receiving yards. And in the backfield, they had brought in Ironhead Craig Hayward to lead their rushing attack, and ironically had traded for the quarterback that had gotten Ryzen sent to Atlanta years earlier, in Jeff George. And any frustration Ryzen had was unleashed in a week one loss to Detroit, when he hauled in a career-high 14 passes for a career-high 193 receiving yards and two touchdowns. And even after the loss, he was still feeling confident going into week two. Who, who, who do we play next week? Rams. Rams. At home. I'm a guarantee a win. Guaranteeing a win? Yep. Andre's not a factor in this game, and it won't be a factor in this game. And he would back up his talk, as even in double and triple coverage, he lit up the Rams for 12 receptions, 123 yards, and two touchdowns. He would cool off over the next four weeks, 
Then week seven was Sanders' return to Atlanta. And while Ryzen would be held to just five catches for 32 yards, the headline of the game was Sanders and Ryzen exchanging punches in the second quarter of an embarrassing Falcons loss. Ryzen continued to underwhelm over the next few weeks, but week 11 saw him catch eight passes for 118 yards and a touchdown. Yet it ended in a loss to New Orleans. Then the next week versus Denver, Ryzen was suspended, reportedly due to missing about 19 team meetings this season. And while he would perform well in his final five games of the season, the Falcons would go just two and three in that period, and overall would finish with a seven and nine record and miss the playoffs, with Ryzen missing the Pro Bowl for the first time since his rookie year, as his season had seen him catch 81 balls for 1,088 yards and eight touchdowns. But after losing prime time last year, the Falcons were about to lose showtime this year. Ryzen was a free agent, and the Falcons were ready to move on from the franchise's career leader in receptions, who had already expressed his desire during the season to move on from Atlanta. And he did, as the Browns made him the highest paid receiver in the league, with a five-year, $17 million deal. And while the Browns paid Ryzen based on his ability, there were many teams who weren't willing to pay him at all, as he had one of the worst reputations in the league at this point. But that was also because that was all the media showed. And while he was far from perfect, there were plenty of good things he did that just went unnoticed because he didn't seek any recognition or validation. However, in Cleveland, he wouldn't exactly become a fan favorite. Ryzen's time as a Brown started off on the wrong foot as he reported to training camp out of shape and throughout the season would clash with head coach Bill Belichick. And after excelling in the Falcons run and shoot offense, which gave him a lot more freedom, he struggled to feel comfortable in the Browns' much more conservative approach. Cleveland was quarterbacked by Vinny Testaverde, and he had the weapons he needed in Ryzen and the fourth-year Keenan McCardell, as the two combined for over 1,400 yards. But this was not what Browns fans were expecting to get from Ryzen, as the 28-year-old put up career-low numbers across the board. It took Ryzen until week five to record more than 35 yards in a game, but he did it in a big way, with six catches for 126 yards in a losing effort to Buffalo but he followed that up with no catches the next week in a loss to Detroit. The Browns would break a three-game losing streak in week nine versus the Bengals, as Ryzen had his best game of the season, with seven catches for 173 yards and a touchdown, with Cleveland sitting at a respectable four and four after this game. But they fell apart the rest of the season, and Ryzen never recorded more than 73 yards in any of his final eight games, while hauling in just one more touchdown. And the Browns would lose six in a row after the Cincinnati game, but it was a comment he made after their week 12 loss to Green Bay that ended up being the nail in the coffin. As with it being more and more obvious that the Browns were leaving Cleveland, Ryzen would allude to that in some comments made after the game, which ultimately led to him receiving death threats. And a depressing Brown season ended with the team going five and 11, as Ryzen's disappointing year had seen him catch 47 passes for 701 yards and three touchdowns. And just like that, Ryzen's time with his third team would come to an end. The now Baltimore Ravens would release Ryzen after just one season, and he would sign on with the Jacksonville Jaguars for the 96 season. Jacksonville really looked to be building a solid team in their second year of existence, already featuring receiver Jimmy Smith and recreating the Browns receiver room after also signing McCardell a couple months earlier. So QB Mark Brunel had all the weapons he needed, yet Ryzen wouldn't even last a full season in Jacksonville. Ryzen was up and down for the team, with his best performance coming in a week four loss to New England, when he had his only 100 yard game of the season, with four catches for 115 yards and two touchdowns. But he would eventually lose his starting spot to Smith, and overall he just didn't mesh with Brunel, with the two clashing throughout the season, culminating in the two being caught arguing on camera after a miscommunication in a week 12 game against Pittsburgh. But that would end up being Ryzen's last game as a Jaguar. The Packers were thin at receiver due to injuries, so they took a chance on Ryzen, picking him up a day after his release. And while he performed modestly for the team over the final five weeks of the season, he was still getting used to the offense, and at the very least, gave Green Bay a receiver that helped keep defenses true, as the Packers won all five of their games after the Ryzen signing and finished at 13-3. But it was in the playoffs where this acquisition would pay off and give Brett Favre another scoring threat through the air. The divisional round brought San Francisco, and Green Bay would get through them easily, as Ryzen had just two catches for 13 yards, yet one of them was for a touchdown. The conference championship versus Carolina would be another convincing win, as Ryzen hauled in three passes for 53 yards to help Green Bay punch their ticket to a Super Bowl matchup with New England. 
Ryzen would only have two receptions in this game, but his first was one to remember. Back to throw his first one. Going deep, has a man open, Andre Ryzen. On just their second offensive play, Green Bay went deep, and Favre connected with Ryzen on a 54-yard touchdown bomb that opened up the scoring, as the Packers would ultimately win the game and the Super Bowl. As after a tumultuous few years, Ryzen had added Super Bowl champion to his resume, with his overall season stats seeing him catch 47 passes for 593 yards and three touchdowns. But Ryzen was just a rental for the Packers, as they would decide against re-signing the soon-to-be 30-year-old receiver. Ryzen quietly signed a one-year deal with Kansas City over the offseason and looked to be turning over a new leaf as he was present and attentive in preseason meetings. And when the season started, it looked to be paying off. The Chiefs had an incredible defense already and an offense that would see a 37-year-old Marcus Allen score 11 touchdowns. But one thing they were missing was a true number one receiver. And although they had drafted tight end Tony Gonzalez, it would still be a couple seasons before he truly reached his potential. So Ryzen would have a resurgent season while catching balls from both Elvis Gerbach and Rich Gannon. And he would win over the fans quickly. As in week two, he would catch eight passes for 162 yards and the game-winning touchdown against Oakland on Monday Night Football. And while he would only have one more 100-yard game this season, he was consistent recording at least 50 receiving yards in 12 games, and overall would lead the Chiefs in all major receiving categories, as well as give himself a new nickname of Spider-Man for his acrobatic touchdown catches. And Ryzen's addition played a huge part in the Chiefs finishing with the AFC's best record at 13-3, which would get them a divisional round matchup with the Broncos. Ryzen would turn in arguably his best playoff game as he led all players with eight catches and 110 yards, but Kansas City just couldn't capitalize as they scored a single touchdown and would lose by four points, with Ryzen's year ending with him catching 72 passes for 1,092 yards and seven touchdowns. So after such a great year, which saw Ryzen make his fifth Pro Bowl appearance, Ryzen appeared in just three of the team's first five games due to hamstring issues, yet he would find the end zone in each of those games, and the Chiefs started four and one. But after this, they would lose six straight, and Ryzen would have just one touchdown over those six games. Then although they would recover to go 3-2 the rest of the way, the damage was done, and Ryzen had underwhelmed, putting up then-career lows in receptions and yards. However, his hamstring injury was nagging him all season, for a Chiefs team who finished with just a 7-9 record and missed the playoffs, as Ryzen's year had seen him catch 40 balls for 542 yards and 5 touchdowns. 1999 would see further decline from Ryzen. Although he appeared in 15 games, he put up the worst numbers of his career, and failed to reach the end zone for the first time since entering the league over a decade earlier. Ryzen was falling out of favor with new Chiefs coach Gunther Cunningham, who was going for a youth movement at receiver. And a now 32-year-old Ryzen didn't fit into that picture, as he became an afterthought on a Chiefs team who finished with a 9-7 record and missed the playoffs. As on the year, Ryzen had hauled in 21 passes for 218 yards. By 2000, Ryzen was dealing with significant money issues off the field, among other things, and was even facing serious legal consequences. And with his play declining and his age increasing, Ryzen could no longer command the big money that he once did. But he would still get some money, as after the Chiefs opted not to re-sign him, he would ink a deal with Oakland. Even though Ryzen had not been very involved last year, he reportedly remained in incredible shape throughout the season. So Oakland didn't have a problem bringing in the veteran wideout. Ryzen would reunite with one of his quarterbacks from Kansas City in Rich Gannon, who led one of the league's most high-powered offenses. The Raiders featured the league's top rushing offense with guys like Tyrone Wheatley and Napoleon Kaufman, and Ryzen would team with longtime Raiders receiver Tim Brown as the two combined for over 1,700 yards. And while Ryzen wasn't putting up numbers like he once did, he would finish second to Brown in all major receiving categories and overall be a really productive player for the Raiders this year. His best stretch came over weeks 10 and 11, when he had two touchdowns and a win over his former team, and then followed that up with his only 100-yard game of the season, in a loss to Denver, with his most important career accomplishment coming in that game, as he reached 10,000 career receiving yards. The Raiders were one of the league's best all-around teams, and would finish with a 12-4 record, which would get them a divisional round matchup with Miami, who they would defeat easily, as Ryzen hauled in both of his targets for 28 yards but they ran into a dominant Ravens defense the next week, and Ryzen only managed a single catch in a 16-3 loss, as Ryzen's year in Oakland ended with him catching 41 balls 
for 606 yards and six touchdowns. Ryzen would be let go by the Raiders after being suspended to begin the 01 season for repeated violation of the NFL's substance abuse policy. And this would turn out to be an uneventful departure from the NFL and a career that was anything but uneventful. But he wasn't done just yet. Ryzen's life would spiral soon after as he continued to deal with money issues, oftentimes due to unpaid child support, and would lose his longtime girlfriend in Lopez, whom he was planning to marry after she lost her life in a car accident in 2002. Over the next few years, Ryzen would turn to partying, surrounding himself with the wrong people and spending money that he didn't have, as he would even make an appearance on the 30 for 30 documentary titled Broke. He made a return to football north of the border in the mid 2000s, playing in five games for the Grey Cup winning Toronto Argonauts of the CFL during the 05 season. Yet he didn't appear in the playoffs and was soon arrested afterwards due to not paying child support. He was charged for the same reasons in 2022 and would then file for bankruptcy. Yet more recently, he seems to be starting a new chapter, which focuses on coaching and mentoring young athletes so they don't make the same mistakes he did. But he doesn't regret the way he carried himself in the NFL, as even if it may have deterred Hall of Fame voters, he feels he forged a path for all the athletes that came after him. And it's hard to argue he didn't at least play a part in what endorsements have become. Andre Risen is another polarizing figure in the history of the NFL. He looked to be heading towards all-time great status after the first half of his career, and he did plenty of talking during that time, but he backed it up. However, once he left Atlanta, he never found the fit or the offense that he wanted, and at times may have felt that he was bigger than the team, as attitude issues became more magnified as his play declined, and he became more known as a headache than as a great player. But even through that time, he won a Super Bowl and had a couple great years in Kansas City and Oakland. And while Andre Risen is far from perfect and could have done some things a lot better in his life, he still seems to be willing to try and right his wrongs and willingly be an example to the youth. And while his case for the Hall of Fame can be debated, what can't be is that he was one of the league's best for years and did things few other receivers had. And he did it all his own way, through the good and the bad. And Andre Risen was a special talent. And whether it was on or off the field, he was one of a kind. But that's it for today's episode on Andre Risen. Hope you enjoyed it and make sure to subscribe for more videos like this one. If you liked it, check out this one on another outspoken receiver. Or this one on another misunderstood star of the 90s. Thanks for watching and see you next time.